Hello and welcome to the news from Kazakhstan. I'm Marina Kim and these are the top stories. The hunger strike in the micro district Bakai continues for already two weeks. Oppositional politicians demand to introduce changes to the elections legislation. Russian agriculture specialists predict the growth of food prices in Kazakhstan. Kazakh political parties are seemingly getting ready for the upcoming elections. While discussing the issue of honest voting process at the roundtable in Almaty on Monday, politicians, experts and analysts of various international organizations called the Kazakh government to introduce substantial changes to the elections legislation of the country. In particular, they demanded to drop the electronic voting system and abandon the 7% threshold for parties to enter the parliament. Kazakh politicians are now officially saying that it is time to prepare for the upcoming parliamentary and possibly presidential elections. In this regard, active parties demand some changes in the rules of campaigning and televised debates, which are currently seen by many as just for show. Azad members ask for all mass media outlets to have equal time allocated for the promotion of all candidates. Observers also harshly criticize the electric voting system Seilau. Electronic voting could become the guarantee for the future 80 to 90 percent in favor of the ruling party. Paraphrasing one Kazakh saying, the system could strangle Kazakh democracy to death. Yet more criticism attracted 7 percent threshold that the parties must pass to the end in the parliament. The head of the Kazakhstan's OSC office, Alexander Kilchevsky, believes the country should abandon the storm as many OSC member states do not employ anything like this. Political pluralism is one of the key moments for any functioning democracy. Unfortunately, I have to note that there is a number of the OSC member states where voters do not have free choice. All of the criticism was seemingly in vain as the meeting was ignored by the members of the ruling and other pro-governmental parties as well as representatives of the Central Elections Commission. This event just shows once again that the authorities do not need and do not want a dialogue with the opposition. The only way for us to draw attention to our common problems is through pressure. We can only force the authorities to a dialogue with us. Azad's strategy for the upcoming voting season has been already tested. The Social Democrats are planning to unite into blocks. Communists and the unregistered party Alga have been invited already and Azad is now looking into working with the unions of interest holders and mortgages. The Social Democrats will be promoting a single candidate like they did in 2005, although no names have been proposed so far. After talking to Kazakh politicians, the head of the OEC Center in Kazakhstan, Alexander Klichevsky, spoke to the reporter of the news agency Kastag about his view of the presidential elections 2012. Although the expert believes it is normal for the current head of state to run for the office yet again, as it is an internal issue of the country, Klichevsky finds it odd that citizens believe they have no alternative. Kilchevsky noted, quote, I'm surprised when people say that a rich, intellectually advanced country doesn't have alternative candidates. I believe there are many worthy people and hope that the fate of your country doesn't depend on a single person, end quote. In the meantime, Astana is getting ready for the OEC summit. In the remaining one and a half months, the authorities want the city policemen to learn how to express themselves in three languages. Russian Kazakh phrase books with basic terminology were given to 7,000 officers in Astana. In addition, local business are also preparing for the long-awaited event. Find out more from next report. Good day. I am police office inspector. Astana policemen are learning English. Officers will have to memorize around a hundred phrases in a month and a half left before the OSC summit. For instance, they need to know what to say while approaching foreigners and how to show them the right way. Some of the phrases deal with situations when a visitor becomes a victim of a robbery or witnesses a crime. We have memos for officers listing their actions in complicated emergencies. Policemen learned all basic terms of the professional vocabulary in three languages, Russian, Kazakh and English. Each employee takes language tests every day.
Apart from language proficiency, officers hone their marksmanship skills. During the summit, the order of the streets of Astana will be ensured by 7,500 policemen. Additional forces will be brought from the country's regions. The new force team includes doctors working at disaster sites as well as firefighters and rescuers, including those who underwent training in nearest OEC regions. While security officials might see the OEC as a headache, businessmen look for an opportunity to turn a profit. For instance, taxi companies updated their fleets and give new instructions to drivers. Both cars and drivers must look perfect. So far, though, a lot of work is still ahead. We screen our staff for their cars, technical condition, appearance, dress code, etc. This is all preliminary work, while on October 25th we will make final decision on who will be working during the summit. All best rooms in Astana hotels for early December have been booked already. Chefs and learning culinary delights while staffs improve their language skills. The preparation process is monitored by the officials from the capital. Events like these do not happen every year. I believe that our common efforts and enormous enthusiasm will make everything proceed perfectly. Officials and deputies in the city administration are still thinking about the best way to divide the specifically allocated budget of about $5 million. In total, the country and the city will spend more than $30 million for the summit of the OEC heads of states. Famous Russian singer Joseph Kabzon fainted on stage at the Global Forum of Spiritual Culture in Astana. The 73-year-old star attempted to continue his speech after being helped by the event organizers, but was eventually taken to a local hospital on an ambulance. Famous Russian singer Joseph Kabzon almost fainted during his speech on the importance of the realization of the culture's historical experience. <laughs> While those on stage ask the audience to support the star with applause, some people from the floor actually recognize the severity of the situation and propose to call an ambulance. Let me continue. I have to go on. I have responsibility before the others. I can finish the text. I remember where I stopped. Unfortunately, the ambulance did make an appearance after Kabzon fainted after all. He is with doctors now. Kabzon is an extremely responsible man. He always finishes something he started. The same happened here. This is horrible, of course. He needs serious treatment. Doctors in the hospital revealed that the star suffered a collapse due to the rapid drop of blood pressure. His situation was likely affected by a number of things, like his cold, numerous trips, tiredness and malnutrition. This could have happened to anyone. Kabzon has a scheduled concert in Astana on October 19th as part of the forum with the singer's participation. Doctors and friends of the star are confident that Kabzon will perform despite what happened on Monday. Things like this happen. I also fainted several times before while in the plane. Usually it happens when one smokes or drinks a lot or doesn't get enough of sleep. You know Kabzon, he's crazy. He constantly travels from one city to another. Everything will be fine. Residents of the micro-district Baka in Almaty intend to continue their hunger strike, but now without even drinking water. The protesters were forced to extreme measures in an attempt to make local officials deal with their long-standing request to legitimize land plots. Residents of the infamous micro-district Bakai threatened the authorities with an absolute hunger strike. Monday saw already the 13th day of their protest. The strikers are outraged by the lack of attention from officials. In addition, they refute the information spread in the mass media last week about the end of their protest. Television channel TAN reported that we have supposedly ended our hunger strike. This is not true. We will continue the protest until our issues will be resolved. The demands of the hunger strikers remain the same, legitimization and inclusion in the district's general plan, the land plots of more than 30 people. From time to time the protesters are visited by doctors who now express their concern that the majority of strikers are starting to show health problems. However, Bakai residents refuse to listen to the recommendations of doctors and do not intend to stop their action. Human rights activist Vadim Kuramshin accuses the leadership of prison 161-4 in the Kastanai region of murdering a 23-year-old inmate Kanat Muhammad Khalif, who was beaten to death in his cell on October 6. A criminal case was instigated against prison guards, although not for the murder, but for the abuse of power. Human rights defender Vadim Kuramshin is outraged by the choice of charges and demands the guards to be tried for a group murder committed with cruelty. No official comments about the emergency have been made by officials so far. It says right in the death form that the death was caused by multiple injuries to the buttocks. This means that the person was severely beaten to death. We also have an audio recording of a conversation between Igor Kolov, a representative of the party Alga and a morgue employee, who said that if the treatment was provided on time, the inmate would have been saved. 
On Sunday, a step of fire in northern Kazakhstan almost crossed border and reached the Russian village Vasilchuki. Only the efforts of firefighters and foresters from both countries prevented the disaster that cost millions tenge worth of damage. The step fire in the Alexandrov village of the Pavlodar region almost spread across the border to Russia and in the direction of the village Vasilchuki. The tragedy was avoided thanks to the efforts of foresters from both countries. Additionally, Russia deployed 12 fire trucks for the elimination of the disaster. This fire represented direct danger to the village Vasilchuki with a population of more than a thousand people. The settlement is quite big and it is located right on the edge of the forest from one side and a step on the other. It is better not to think what would happen had we not contained it. Preliminary findings showed that the fire started at noon on October 17th. The primary firefighting was done by foresters, even though it is not their official responsibility. Firefighters from Pavlodar reached the premise only four hours later. Even though it is not our responsibility, we are always ready to put away any step of fire to prevent it from entering the forest. Basically, it is in our interest. The Pavlodar Regional Emergencies Department already names possible reasons of fire. The possible reason of the fire is the negligent actions of the local population. It looks like the emergency was caused by the cigarette butt or a still lit match dripped on the dry grass. The total area of fire was around 300 hectares, which is about 300 football fields. It took several hours to completely put out the fire. The district administration started calculating the damages on Monday morning. Kazakh citizens should be ready for the growth of food prices, said on Monday Ivan Abalensov, the chairman of Russian Agri-Industrial Union. It is likely the recent increase of cost for bread will be followed with a spike of prices for meat and dairy products. Harvesting is almost complete in Russia and it is becoming clear that local reserves of grain, potatoes and corn will not be enough to satisfy the internal market. The chairman of the Russian Agro-Production Union says that Russia is ready to purchase feed and coarse grain from Kazakhstan at the price of $195 per ton. The Kazakh Agriculture Ministry reported that Kazakhstan can import up to 2 million tons of grain, even though it seems that Kazakhstan is benefiting from the situation in Russia. Citizens of the country will have to prepare for the increase of retail prices. The increase of prices for feed grain in Russia will result in the decrease of livestock and inevitable growth of prices for meat and dairy products in all countries of the customs union. There are preconditions for the increase of prices because when a big neighbor like Russia talks about the increase of its demand, it means that demand will naturally lead to the increase of prices. The feed grain constitutes 60 to 75 percent of the prime cost for meat. Of course, we are not saying that the price will jump by 70 percent, but they might increase by 20 percent.